Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and it's always such an honor and a pleasure to be with you. And so um, I, I hope that you can see me clearly. I just got um, a, a new phone. My phone literally after three and a half years just died. <laughs> it just wasn't working well. So um, in any event, I... I hope I see you guys jumping on. Just leave a quick comment and let me know if you can see me clearly. I, and I hope, uh, I think I'm looking at the right spot too for the camera. So, oh good. Okay, well welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. I see you guys jumping on and I love, love, love being with you. Aw, Lorraine, she said, hello, mighty warrior sister. Leslie, Janice, Michelle, Angela, so great to see you all. Vicki, I could keep going with the names, but um, but we're going to jump right in. Hi, Mercedes. Okay. So, oh, yay. Thank you, Michelle. She said, hi. Yes, you're clear. Okay, awesome. So in this broadcast tonight, this is, it's really, um, it's, it's, it's an awesome message. You know, the Lord has had me really camped on, um, about the subject of believing. And it's pretty awesome because in this broadcast, the Lord wants to shed light on, are you trusting in him or are you putting your focus on fear or fear of lack? Fear of lack in particular is, you know, what, um, what came to me by the Holy Spirit for this message. And the Lord, so my question is, do you feel like you're lacking anything today? Okay, and I'm not asking you to agree with lack, but it's just a question of do you feel like you're lacking? You know, do you feel fear around lack? The, the Lord spoke these words to me today by the Holy Spirit, and this is what he said. He said, people, oh man, it, it brought me to tears too, and he said, People are lacking because they don't trust me. They're still trying to figure out in the natural, by the world's standards, how to fix things and make them better. Though they hear my word, their hearts are hardened by their experiences in the world and by the opinions of others. Wow. And here, so here's the thing. I mean, and you can, you know, put just hit the replay button, you know, or watch it again later if you want to hear that again. But the bottom line is, well, the Lord said, I don't even want to say the bottom line, but his words, I'll just repeat it, all right? People are lacking because they don't trust me. They're still trying to figure out in the natural, by the world's standards, how to fix things and make them better. Though they hear my word, their hearts are hardened by their experiences in the world and by the opinions of others. Whoa. So when people say, you cannot, God says, I am. Ooh. If the great I am lives inside of you, right, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the great I am, that means Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That means you can do all things because Christ strengthens you, right? And let me just go. And Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, that anything is possible for him who believes. So when you believe, nothing will be impossible to you, right? Believe, the word believe. You know, I've been sort of camped on here for the last couple of weeks because the Lord, the Lord, he's still talking about believe, believe. You know, and all through the Bible, He's saying, believe, 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 right? Those who believe, you know, believe versus unbelief. And I was literally brought to tears a few times today, just sitting there, meditating on the word, thinking about what the Lord was showing me. And, you know, as I was reading and just what he was showing me and the word believe again, the word believe, it came back. And the thing is, is, it's so simple, yet we make it so hard sometimes. We make it so hard. You know, and you could say, yeah, but that was Jesus. No, Jesus knew his authority. He knew he had his father's authority. He knew he had the power of the Holy Spirit, and he never doubted. Point blank, he never doubted. He knew that whatever he spoke, it had to happen. And that's why he saw things, you know, so fast. And so 
So the Lord was showing me this morning, he was showing me a vision, literally. It, it, and when I say a vision, it wasn't like some open vision. It was just, I was thinking about it and I was seeing the picture of when he casted out the demon, right? The unclean spirit from the boy in Mark chapter nine. You should go and read that chapter. But where he was, um, he cast out, the, his disciples couldn't cast out the demon, but Jesus, Jesus did, right? And so he was showing me this morning about how he, you know, how he rebuked that demon and casted the demon out. The evil spirit would throw the boy into fire, he, and this boy was unable to hear and unable to speak, okay? And Jesus rebuked the evil spirit, saying, listen, and now I'm reading from the New Living Translation, okay? He, he said, listen, listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear or speak, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again, exclamation point. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And you know something? That spirit had to go. Why? Because Jesus knew. Again, he knew his authority. He knew he had the power of the Holy Spirit. And he knew that when he spoke, it had to happen. What does that mean? That means there was zero doubt, zero unbelief. Zero doubt, zero unbelief. So Jesus meant it, right? The spirit, and this is what it said. The spirit screamed and convulsed the boy and then left him. So the spirit, right? Jesus commanded this and the thing, you know, the unclean spirit, it screamed and it convulsed the boy and then it left. And so as I saw and pictured the Lord doing this, right? This is just how I speak with the Lord. This was my conversation with him. And I just said, I was like, hmm, I was like that easy, huh? Just like that. And the Holy Spirit said, yes, it all comes down to what can you believe? And I was like, I tell you, then the Holy Spirit was showing me the words, hard hearts, hard hearts, like hardened hearts. The last two weeks, again, the Lord was showing me about believing. And the whole thing is, if you want to see miracles, you've got to become like a little child and just believe. You've got to become like a little child. Don't reason away your belief and your trusting in the Lord trying to reason things out in the natural. You know, I mentioned last week about how, you know, Peter was a fisherman, right? This was his business. This was his trade his, his whole life. You know, he's a fisherman, right? And so when it came time to pay the taxes, Jesus said to Peter, you know, um, go and cast your hook. And, you know, the first fish that comes up, it's going to have silver in its mouth. Take that silver and give it to pay the taxes for you and for me, right? And literally, Peter could have said, seriously, Lord, like, I've been fishing my whole life. I've never come across a fish that had money in its mouth. But he didn't. He did what the Lord said, didn't reason it out. But hey, we know from reading about Peter, I'm sure probably as he was walking to go do it, he was probably like, oh my gosh. But guess what? He did it. He just did it. And boom, there was the silver, the taxes were paid. So in any event, don't consider, right? Abraham, it was, Abraham was justified by faith because he considered not. He didn't consider the deadness of his body, right? Nor Sarah's womb. He believed God. He just believed God, okay? And so don't consider anything but God's word. And this is what you gotta do. You gotta declare there is no other option. There is no option. It will be as God said, and that's it. And I'm telling you, that's exactly what I did when my mom was in the hospital. I was seeing all the bad reports and, you know, her struggling and suffering and infection and this and that. And I was like, no. And I spoke to that infection and I said, you will go. You will go now. And it will not be any other way. There is no other option. I mean, I was like, rah. You know, you have to, you got to attack it head on. And I believed God and the infection left. And what the drain that was supposed to be on her, hanging from her for three weeks to three months, two days. That thing, listen, it was a miracle, it popped off, but then for the gallbladder surgeon to come to me and say it did its job, there's no more infection, 
hello, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. But, you know, I say, I, I didn't mean like hello, like derogatory, but what I'm saying is you have authority and you have to know it. You have to know it. And so that will upset people around you. And I say it all the time, you will get persecuted. Those who are living godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Listen, I've gotten so much persecution, even in my own family, probably more than from anybody. And you know what? Now I just kind of, it, 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 it's like, yes, does it hurt? Absolutely. Absolutely it hurts. But you know what? I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to believe God. And that's it. And when they see my God results, listen, when somebody does need prayer, I'm sure, you know, I mean, and I have been the first one that they've called. And then with some of them, they just, they don't believe. And it always reminds me of the scripture where Jesus said, you know, a prophet is honored, but not in his own hometown. And he couldn't do many miracles in his own hometown because of their unbelief. And it's not that he, he wouldn't, you know, faith pulls like gravity. And I say this all the time, the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus didn't decide to heal her. Her faith pulled, pulled like gravity and pulled the healing power out of him. Praise Jesus, my God. So like I was saying, persecution will come even from your family members because when you don't consider anything but God's word, it is gonna upset people around you. People that are religious, you know, the, the Pharisees and all this stuff. You know, and I hear people say a lot of times, and I've said it before too, about religious spirits. Well, you know, religion. I'm not even going to say religious spirits, right? Because we have authority over unclean spirits. But Jesus didn't cast the spirits, you know, out of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's, you have your own set of beliefs. People, right, they're going to believe what they want to believe. And people that don't have a renewed mind, that's an unrenewed mind to the word of God, then they're not going to act in accordance, you know, with God's word. But when you let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life, I'm telling you, you will speak and act accordingly, right? In agreement with him and God's power will be released in your life and people will see it. And so again, Jesus gave you authority. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are born again. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And born again means that you have asked Jesus to come into your heart. So your spirit is now one with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came into you and recreated your spirit. That's what it means to have a, you know, to be born again. You have a, a brand new spirit. Okay. You know, okay. So, okay. Praise the Lord. I hope that's clear to everybody. So, you know, even if you're looking at a situation and it takes a little bit of time, maybe you're speaking against, you know, lack. God doesn't want you to fear or have anxiety about anything. He wants you to speak God's word and don't, you got to get rid of the hardness in your heart. You know, all unbelief, um, it's really due to a lack of feeding on God's word. I mean feeding, just like you need physical food for your body. This is food for your spirit and not only for your spirit, but for your mind so that your mind and your spirit can be in agreement. You know, if you're born again, you have a brand new spirit, but if you're mind, if you don't know what the word of God says because you haven't taken the time, you know, to, to read or to hear, right? then your heart and your mind will be conflicted very often because you'll you're you know you'll want to do something and your heart or you know might say mm, you know don't do that or your conscience or whatever but your mind's on and you're like no I'm going to do it anyway and then it's oh I know I, sh I should have I shouldn't have done that right or I should have done this shouldn't have done that you get what I'm saying reading God's word aloud and you don't have to read it out loud but I like to read the word of God for example and just just even kind of in this tone when I'm you know just by myself like during the time the devil came and said to him if you are the son of God so I'm saying you don't have to read it I just flipped my bible open but what I'm saying is you don't have to read it you know out loud you can just read it aloud it's powerful it's powerful. If you want to read it out loud, you're by yourself. That's great too. But what I'm saying is you can read it 
when you read the word, it's so good to read aloud because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? You're feeding on God's word. Praise God, right? But I was saying that even if a situation, if you don't see it change right away, remember, oh, I'm, oh the Holy Spirit's so good. I'm thinking about the fig tree right now. Jesus spoke to the fig tree, and if you think about it, it hit the roots first before it was seen on the outside. So when you speak to something, you have to remember you're releasing God's word. I always say it's like a spinning top. It's in motion, headed for the target. And the only thing that can reverse that is you coming into agreement with something different. You will stop that faith in its tracks. Faith pulls like gravity. So when you release God's word and you believe it, it's done. It's it's a done deal. Be, you know, just patient. Don't allow, don't consider anything else and you will see God's result. Listen, this isn't coming from me. This is the word of God. This is a spiritual law that you will have what you say when you believe what you say, right? And it's lined up with God's word. Well, even if if it was something evil, if you partner with the devil and you agree with him and you believe that, that's what will come to pass. Faith pulls like gravity. What are you putting your faith in? Make sure it's the word of God. Make, listen, I always say listen. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm like, listen. Um, oh my gosh. Matthew 16, 19, one of my favorite scriptures. One of my favorite scriptures because Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you permit, right, will be permitted. But who's got to do the allowing? You do, right? So you want to make sure that you, you know you have authority, Luke 10, 19, right? Agree with God. Agree with God. Okay. So as I was reading Mark chapter 8 today, right, I read 8 and 9. And the Lord, he, he you know how like when you're reading scripture, sometimes things are highlighted to you. Well, what was highlighted to me was about how, how after he fed the 5,000 people and then he fed the 4,000 the word of God, right? The Bible says that the disciples still didn't understand. They still didn't get it, right? Jesus asked them if, in Mark 8, 17, he asked them if their hearts were too hard to take it in. The miracle about the loaves, right? He asked them, were, are your hearts, you know, were your hearts too hard to take it in, right? To take it in. What does that mean? If you're reading God's word and you're taking it in, you're taking it in, you're taking it in, you're going to believe it, you're getting rooted, you're getting grounded in it, you're taking it in, right? If you don't take it in, that means you're rejecting it, right? Now, they believed because they saw what he did, but they didn't understand. I think they were still having a hard time comprehending what happened because then when it came time for the 4,000, they were still talking about, you know, um, how are they going to feed the people again? And Jesus was like, don't you, didn't you, don't, don't you understand? So, and then in Mark 7, 7, Mark 7, verse 52, the scripture says they didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves, right? It says their heart, their hearts were too hard to take it in. And then Jesus asked them, you know, in the next chapter, were your hearts too hard to take it in, right? They saw it, but they were having a hard time, you know, processing it all. And think about it, even after three years, they still had a hard time understanding, you know, the things that Jesus was saying. And Jesus, you know, he was so patient. And think about it, he was the only one that truly understood how the kingdom of God operated, but yet he was with them and he gave them, you know, the power over unclean spirits. And then eventually he gave them the Holy Spirit and he's given to you and me. But we still have to renew our minds. It, it, it's not like you're going to read the Bible once and boom, you just got the, you got it. No, you have to renew. You've got to feed on it every day because that's how you get strong. That's how the Holy Spirit brings you more and more understanding. He's not going to give you everything all at once. You'd be like, what? You know, I mean, your head would probably <laughs> like explode. It's revelation. He gives you revelation that revealed knowledge from heaven, right? Then he gives you more, right? He lets you, it's good to chew on it, feed on the word of God, get the understanding, then he gives you more, then he gives you more, then he gives you more, then he gives you more. This is why it's so, so, so important. And so 
you know, like I said, Jesus knew he had his father's authority and he knew that he had the power of the Holy Spirit. He never doubted ever. This is the key. And so believe God like a little child. Get rid of any hardness in your heart. And you'll see, this is what the Holy Spirit just spoke to me about two hours ago as I was preparing for this message. The Holy Spirit said, believe God like a little child. Get rid of the hardness in your heart. And you'll see, this was the Holy Spirit's words, not mine because I don't talk like this. He said, you will see unprecedented miracles. And I went, unprecedented? I was like, do I even really know what that means? And, you know, I started to change the words in my notes to say something else. No, I would have missed it. And the Holy Spirit was like, "Uh uh-uh. I don't, don't change what the Holy Spirit says. He said unprecedented. So I looked it up. I looked it up. I looked up the word unprecedented. And here's what it means. I was like, oh, Lord, you're amazing. Unprecedented, the meaning. Number one, never having happened or existed in the past. What? Number two, never having happened. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, it's the same. Sorry, it says one and two, but it's the exact same meaning. One and two, it says never having happened or existed in the past. Never having happened or existed in the past. And I was like, okay, Lord, wait a minute. And then I remember the Holy Spirit brought to me John 14, 12. Jesus said, truly, I tell you that those who, right, he who believes in me, will do the same works that I do and greater works than these because I go to be with my father. And I was like, what? And I'm like, okay, somehow I I just kind of always thought, this is why you got to feed on the word and get the revelation from the Holy Spirit. I always just kind of thought that greater works and I'm thinking, well, how could we do greater works than Jesus did, right? He must mean more works. No, he said greater works, and the Holy Spirit said tonight, unprecedented. And I was like, oh my gosh. So there you go. That, to me, that's revelation that explains John 14, 12, right? When we believe, (laughs) that's, yeah, Sammy, that's what it says. That is the meaning of unprecedented. It is amazing. And that's the word that the Holy Spirit gave me. Not me. I literally was about to change it and say, you will see great and mighty miracles. The Holy Spirit was like, no, unprecedented. And I was like, whoa. Oh my gosh. So, and and this is, you know, we only have a few minutes left, but I want to just say that feeling fear does not mean that you're in unbelief. Okay. I just want to clarify this because thoughts will come, but you don't have to give in to those thoughts and agree with them by saying the thought because the thought that you get that you speak that you believe bam that's the power that you're being re- that's being released no thoughts will come but the second that you start to feel fear or anxiety second corinthians 10 4 and 5 cast that 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 cast that thought down and make it obey christ so how do you do that right you say you say when that thought comes no i always lift my right hand it just reminds me of that the right hand of authority. You know, no, I don't receive that. I don't accept it. Or you can say, I'm not in agreement with that. And you say, Lord, I trust you and it will be this way. And you speak what you're believing for and it will be no other way. There is no other option. I said it. And if I said it, God said it because you're speaking God's word. So guess what? Angels hearken to the voice. They make happen what you speak when they hearken to the voice of the word of God, but you have to give God's word voice. You have to speak and bam. Okay. Praise the Lord. Mm. I love it. I love teaching. I love, you know, I love the word of God so much. He wants you to not feel fear around lack. Read Mark chapters, you know, seven, eight, nine, read about the miracle of the loaves and the fishes and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. I'm telling you, mm, so good, so good. So that's how you speak to your mountain and really anything that comes against you. You speak against it, okay? No other option. Don't consider anything else but God's word. And remember that way you release God's power, headed for the target. The only thing that can stop that in its tracks is you coming into agreement 
and saying something else and speaking something else. Okay, if you've never made Jesus, you know, we're just about done, the Lord of your life, and you'd like to tonight, we can do that right now. I'm going to pray a simple prayer with you. Mean it with your whole heart. Listen, God knows if you mean it. You can't fool the Lord. You can't fool the Holy Ghost, right? So not that you'd ever want to, but I'm just saying if you want to receive Jesus tonight, I'm just going to lead you into a simple prayer to help you to do just that. Then the Holy Spirit will come in when you mean it with all your heart. Recreate your spirit. You'll be born again. Then what you want to do is start reading this word. Um, and I suggest starting with an easy to read Bible, like the New Living Translation is the one um, that I probably read more than any other. And I know people love the King James and I have several others so I can compare. And, um, um, but so anyway, I'm going to lead you into this prayer now. So just mean it with your whole heart. You can repeat after me and just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. If you're already born again, you are a saint in the kingdom. Lord, I believe that you died for me on the cross and paid for my sins forever. I believe that God the Father raised you on the third day and you are alive now and you live forever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit so that I can be on fire and a witness for you. Lord, I just thank you. I praise you with all my heart in Jesus' name, in your name, Lord. Amen and amen. Woo! Glory to God. Listen, immediately, if you just prayed that, the Holy Spirit came in, recreated your spirit, boom, done. And now you need to get yourself an easy to read Bible. Listen, I prefer, listen, you can, I always say listen, right? Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't, sorry about that, but I can't help it. Okay, listen, get yourself an easy to read Bible. Yes, you could do it on the internet or whatever, but I just really love a handheld Bible. But listen, you, there I go again, but listen, oh my gosh. Make sure, you know, if you're, if you're sharing scriptures with someone and all you have available is your phone, use your phone. If you're trying to look up a scripture, do it. If you remember part of a scripture, I do that all the time. And then just Google part of that scripture. It'll come right up on your phone and you'll have the scripture. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. And um, so if this blessed you tonight, make sure that you share this with others. This is knowledge. This is, you know, knowledge is power, but it's understanding that people need. And that's why I do these broadcasts. If you have been standing for your healing, you know, I want to mention something too. I got an email the other day from someone that said something like, um, I know that God is healing me, but it's in his time, not mine. If you're watching this broadcast right now, no, that's not the way it works. That is not the kingdom. That comes from people's experiences and excuses, okay? When you release God's power, listen, I tore my rotator cuff. I didn't receive my healing for eight months. Why? It wasn't God. It was me. He was waiting for me to receive it. Remember the fig tree. When you speak to something and you have no doubt it's in motion, it has to happen. It has to happen. Now, okay, but you might say, well, what about, you know, Abraham? He believed God. Yeah, but God told him a year from now. So my point is, Jesus said, the fig tree. Like, just remember, Jesus is our model of how to do things and how to operate in the kingdom. And so I hope that this has blessed you tonight. Yeah, you know, a lot of people make excuses based on their experiences or the things that they've been taught, which it's not the word of God. You know, if you believe they will be healed or if, the, granted, Jesus said, do you have faith? You know, your faith, I believe faith, your faith will trump unbelief, but they have to want it. You know, some people, they don't even want you to pray for them. Okay, let me know when you're ready. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. So in any event, if you haven't gotten the seven scriptures to stand for your healing, and I, what I mean to stand, I mean to release it so it's in motion, so it happens. Boom. 
right? That's what I'm talking about. Like when my husband had that lump on his neck, oh my gosh, I spoke to that thing immediately. It was in motion. We didn't even see a difference until I think it was like the fifth day, but it went from this to this and then to like, like the size, it went from like the size of a quarter to the size of like a pea. And then in two more days, it was gone completely, completely. So what I'm saying is don't think that because you don't see something immediately that it's not in motion. It's in motion. You're going to see it. Don't be moved. And when the devil tries to come to you with a lie saying, that didn't work. Think of the fig tree. It has to hit the roots first and then you'll see it. Don't be moved. All right. I love you. I bless you in Jesus name. And if you didn't get the seven scriptures, go to my website at lisaboldo.com, put your name and your email address in the boxes, and you'll have it in your email box in just a few minutes, all right? And it comes with a video, and like the last seven minutes of the video, although I suggest that you watch the whole thing, um, gives you those seven scriptures and how to use it. So I love you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Make sure you share this with others on your social media, and let's let's advance God's kingdom together. And be sure to follow me on Instagram as well if you're on there. I'm sort of new to it, but going to be doing a lot more. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching The Victorious Life. Good night.